Well, welcome to Dreams of Wings and welcome to St. Bart's and welcome to the Hype Performance Group H145, uh, which is an Airbus helicopter. Um, you probably sense from the logo if you're new to the channel this channel is mainly about warbirds and things like spitfires and mustangs and uh, texans harvards that sort of thing but every now and again i like to do something different and one of the things that i have uh, been interested in since i was a kid is helicopters i've not really flown them much in the sim uh, really because um not really found anything that grabs me in fsx or p3d before done a bit of gaming helicopter flying things like armor um, I even tried the Huey in DCS, and this is how that ended. Oh, if I stopped talking and actually flew, it would probably help. Yeah, let's support that. Oh. Okay. Um. Ladies and gentlemen. Prospective helicopter pilots. Uh, oh, look, <laughs> that's my tail. Yeah, I think the uh, less said about that, the better, really. So, really, I'm, I'm very green with helicopters, and uh, I've heard really good things about this high performance uh, Airbus helicopter. So I thought, why not give it a try? Uh, this is the uh, the new H145. It's on early release at the moment. It's payware. They also do a freeware H135. Um, and I just thought it's it's a beautiful looking aircraft. They've done a great job with the model, the textures. Um, have a look if you haven't seen it already uh, at the Dreams of Wings Instagram, which is Dreams of Wings One. I'll put a link down below. Um, see some of the screenshots posted on there. You'll see just how beautiful this looks in different lights. And that's one of the great things about this sim is that we have some amazing different light settings, different times of day. Uh, and uh, this this chopper just looks absolutely fantastic in it. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're not going to do the full um, takeoff checklist, uh, the pre-start and all that sort of thing. Uh, we will be covering that in future videos uh, for my training, not yours. A lot of you probably know what you're doing anyway. Um, what I want to do in this trip is this is our first flight. I haven't flown this yet. I started the engine once just for a laugh without the manual, didn't know what I was doing, hadn't activated the product yet, so we didn't get off the ground. And uh, really, yeah, it was just a case of playing with some switches. So this is the first flight. I've no idea what it's going to be like. It could be very bumpy. Seat belts do need to be worn, um, but hopefully it'll be a bit of fun. And we'll just fly around the area. It's beautiful scenery. Hopefully find some ships to try and land on, although I can't see that happening. Um, but always worth a giggle, eh? Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's just get cracking. We need the uh, battery switch to on and engage. Oh, try that. There we go. And again to engage. Watch everything starting up here. Excellent. That's good. Let's acknowledge that. Okay, power up test is uh, tested. Okay, as I say, we're not going to do uh, we're not going to do all the tests. So now we're going to do the fuel prime. One and two, and uh, we're going to put engine one main switch to idle. There we go. Watching the instruments here, watching uh, N1 increase. Our oil pressure rise. Startup test is green. And I'm looking for, uh, let's have a look, closer look at what's going on here. Okay, that's still rising. There we go, we've got idle. 
Okay, let's do the same for engine two. Done with that page. That's now idle. We had a low hydraulic pressure indicator here. That's gone out as well. That's good. Okay, after engine start, uh, let's turn pitot heat. Now I know pitot heat is one of my um, honeycomb switches that I need to try and figure. So that's it. Wasn't that one? Uh, was it that one? It wasn't that one. Wasn't that one? Wasn't that one? Wasn't that one? There it is. Okay, so P to heat is on avionic master switch. Now I know one of these is also mapped to, and I think I know which one it is. So let's have a quick look down here. There it is, both of those are now on. Uh, standby battery switch to on. Okay. And LAVCS switch to pill or max. I have no idea what that is. Uh, I thought I saw it somewhere. Where did I see that switch? I feel like it's staring me in the face. There it is. Pill or... Um, I'll put it to pilot. We haven't got any passengers on so I am just going to set it to pilot I, as I said I don't know what that switch does that's something that I certainly need to check on uh, right fuel pump pri uh, one and two the primes off and the transfer pumps uh, F and A to on so let's go back to our switches here so we go boom 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 uh, and we're going to do our exterior lights so let's put our strobe on. That's one of my switches here. Let's see if we can find that one. Uh, I'll put that one in anyway. Strobe, there we go. Position lights. Excellent. Uh, interior lights, EMX to arm. Int lights, EMX switch to on. There we go. Okay, we don't need ventilation at the moment. Um, collectively reset to full down. We've got that test. Uh, okay, let's just have a quick look over here. So I um, want to now. Uh, this is something I need to check on. One of these switches, this changes the flight model. I want to make sure I've got the advanced on. So I check the manual. It says on is advanced flight, basic flight is off. So we'll go for advanced. Uh, hopefully that is on. Um, let's just quickly run back here, see where the generator is. I'm sure I've missed that somewhere. Battery on, da, 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 test switch, fuel pump, done that. Standby battery, fuel pump, lights. Okay, is it somewhere further on? Um, okay, I'm not seeing it in the quick start. I must have missed it. I'm going to put the generator on mm -hmm. interesting why is it not it won't stay on is that because it's mapped to another one of my switches have a look, see if anything here does that. 
No. 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 Okay. I'm not sure why the... Uh, why the generator is going off. I would expect that to stay on. Um, so let's see what happens. Have we got any idea here of... Got an emitter anywhere? Don't want to get too bogged down in that. Okay, that's something that I need to uh, obviously need to look at. Okay, so a uh, test switch to lamp. Uh, where did you go? Where did you go? There we go. All our lamps come on. I did say I wasn't going to do that testing. Let's uh, quickly move that out the way. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, now uh, we need to turn on our various autopilot bits. Now that's not, um, it's not like a, the autopilot that I'm used to in the plane that will fly for you. These are kind of more like aids. That's the great thing about these modern helicopters is that they do actually have uh, aids on. So let's, uh, I think it's those and those. Okay, and uh, what have we got? I'm presuming they're now engaged. Um, find AFCS green rectangles. Okay, so uh, what I was searching for then is the uh, just looking at the uh, quick start sheet. Um, it doesn't go into much detail. I think it assumes that you've probably done the work beforehand to find out where everything is, uh, which is why what I'm doing is uh, can be a bit uh, counterintuitive. Um, what I'm looking for, I was looking for some green rectangles. So if I just quickly switch those on, you will see at the top we get our green rectangles. That's what I was looking for. And uh, that shows that everything is tickety boo. Okay, so we've done that. We've set that on. Uh, and now we are going to... This is it. This is it. We're actually going to fly. Um, right, main switch to flight and um, engines one and two. And then we close the guards. Oh. Here we go, folks. Of the heat effect there. Okay, are you ready? The first flight. Let's just check that everything is uh, where it should be. We've done that. We've got no warning lights on. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay, so we're just going to go for it now. Um, I'm going to try and be gentle with the collective because uh, that's quite key. Let's get us into a flying mode, reset the track IR, another quick look around, and uh, now's the time to say your prayers if you uh, want to. Right, let's engage the collective. Being ever so gentle. Oh, okay. Let's close that. So, I'm going to put in a bit of left rudder because as soon as I started, then it uh, started going to the to the right in a very skittish kind of way. So let's put in some left. I think what we might have to do is jump into the air. Oh, let's try and stay away from the building. Bit of left pedal. Oh wow. So I've got a bit of left pedal on just to stabilise it. Oh, that's not bad. Okay, let's get out of here. Before the control tower tells us off. Trying to make sure I don't over talk. Bring the talk down 
little bit. I think that there is Eden Rock, which is a five star, very nice hotel. Something I've noticed in this, and I did look it up, and it seems to be something that other people are seeing, is um, having issues with, um, uh, especially low down sea textures, getting those kind of squares popping up. Um, but it seems to be an issue at the moment. Hopefully they'll get that fixed soon. Just have a quick look, checking everything's okay. Not got any warnings coming up. T's and P's are still good. Let's bring it back round. It's not a great idea to be out over the sea when uh, you're a novice helicopter pilot. Yes, that was quite interesting. Um, take off. First thing I've learned is always have a bit of left pedal on by the looks of it. Just to counteract some of that torque. It uh, very quickly got a bit skittish and started um, turning to the right. And also it's kind of leaning to the right. Leaning. Flying. Probably a better way of describing it. Well, this is certainly great scenery for flying around. I've got the um, Orbex uh, Vessels pack for this area. Wow, look at that. Uh, so we should have uh, some more boats and things to look at. But uh, yeah, very smooth to fly. But I'm just doing the easy bit at the moment. There's probably people that know what they're doing that are watching this and looking at something on the instrument panel and saying, my God, what are you doing? But we seem to be in some semblance of controlled flight. And I don't think I'm over egging the engine too much. Just keeping an eye on that. Let's have a look outside. I've quite got control of these uh, exterior controls yet in MSFS. I've got a camera set up on my control, uh, an old game controller, but they don't always seem to do what I want them to do. Yeah, that's a bit better. It's a beautiful model, really does look good. Yeah, I like that. I like the way the, the light plays off it. That's good. Okay, let's get control again before we do something silly, because I think we've, yeah, we've almost transitioned to a hover there. Okay. Let's have a closer look at this instrument panel. See what everything's doing. Well, quite beautiful. Shall we uh, try and land on something? Now, with this um, Orbex Vessels pack, before that, there was a like a cruise ship out there with a helipad on it, but that seems to have been replaced by uh, that over there, which is a better model. So I'm not sure what we've got in the way of um, just watching the speed. Let's not go too overboard. Uh, what we've got in the way of helipads. I suspect not much down here. It's Gustavia. Named after an old Swedish king. The, uh, this island has kind of swapped hands between the French and the Swedish, and uh, but predominantly it's been in French hands and is in French hands today. But the, uh, the port there, Gustavia, Gustavia rather, is uh, named after the old Swedish king from when it belonged to Sweden. 
So, I'm not seeing much in the way of helipads at the moment, so we may have to uh, just find somewhere uh, that uh, looks slightly landable and give it a try. Kind of scoping out at this point, what I was hoping was to find some really good places around here to practice uh, hovering over and landing and trying to get some precision involved. Some more yachts over here. Rich and famous. I'm not seeing anything with a helipad on it. Put it this way, there's a helipad on one of those. I ain't going to try and land on that. That's definitely above my skill level at the moment, without a doubt. So let's come back round. What I do love about this sim is that the scenery is absolutely gorgeous. Looks really good. Quick look at everything. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to grips with this. I mean, we've got this uh, freeware version of the GTN 750 here. I used the GTN 750 in P3D um, quite a bit and uh, it's a really useful piece of kit. Uh, and if you pay a bit extra, you can get some more functionality added into these, but that's definitely good to have on board. There's certainly a lot to get your teeth into with this, which is why I'd, one of the reasons I was interested in using it for doing some training, because it's, um, you know, it's not, it's not as simple as, uh, you know, <laughs> some of the planes that I've flown before in terms of systems. Spitfires don't have all these kind of things on them. Right, have we got a helipad on that boat? I think we have. No, okay, so let's uh, bring it round. And what I'm going to try and do is uh, let's attempt a relatively safe type of approach first. And I'll see if I can land us on the runway back at the airport. Oh, this is a very slow approach. I'm being very, there's that issue with the water there. Hopefully that's something that they're going to fix because it's a bit of an immersion killer. Okay. Let's see what uh, see what we can do. Collective. Oh my lord. Okay, that was a that was a little bit of a bumpy one. So we slipped back a bit then. Let's come back up again. I forgot to put the left uh, left rudder on then, so let's try and hold that, try and turn around a little bit, that's interesting, there we go, come on, turn. What I'm going to try and do is hover taxi down the runway a bit without actually taking off uh, which is a lot harder than it would appear when you've not done it before because okay no, that's not too bad it's funny the amount of control inputs having to put in to um, to do what I want it to do and the um, there, it's starting to get away now. The uh, strange... control mindset you have to get into where you've got your collective, which is uh, a throttle lever for me, and using that to, at the moment, to kind of... Um, control the height and then using the stick to control the cyclic for the forward movement 
but uh, I have to say after my experience in DCS I'm doing a lot better than I thought I would although as I say the pros will be watching this thinking you got a long way to go sunshine right let's try and just set it down a bit more gently this time okay we're down well that's not too bad not too bad okay let's do one more take off here forgot the rudder again got to remember that before I put the power on stick in some left rudder or left uh, left boot right let's transition to a forward flight Pull back a little bit on the collective. I was slightly getting over talked there. Whew. Very interesting. So that's the kind of thing the, the hover taxing there and just basic hovering. Uh, I remember watching the student parts at RAF Shawbury practicing that sort of thing for uh, quite some time in gazelles and um, it's just something that is not going to be um, very entertaining for you on a video but it's just something that you have to get the time in to do um, if you want to fly these things properly I'd like to get to the point in this where I can you know set it down exactly where I want to set it down um, and uh, fly it smoothly and just have that kind of complete control over it uh, which I haven't got at the moment but it's certainly doing best than it did in DCS I don't know how much of that is uh, due to uh, Microsoft 2020 um, system flight system I don't know how much hyper performance have actually uh, being able to customise the flight model um, I think a lot of it is due to the stabilisation in this aircraft um, I don't know what it would be quite like to fly it without it there is a voice in my head now saying switch it off switch off all the stabilisation and see what happens um, that would be the entertaining thing to do for you wouldn't it Generally, they keep them on, so I'm going to keep them on for the time being. Maybe that's for another video uh, when I'm feeling stupid. So, uh, yeah, there's two flight models. There's the Advanced, which is the one that I'm using, I hope. Otherwise, this is going to be very embarrassing. Uh, and the other is a kind of a basic arcade flight model. And you set that using that switch. And my understanding is that if, if that switch down there assistance there talk is got off on it, then that means that you are using the uh, the arcade flight model. I am going to test that though. Uh, let's just see what see what it's like with that deselected. So let's try. Okay. how much of a difference I'll be able to detect being a complete novice let's try another landing over here within that mode and see what difference it makes that's a shame that ship with the helipad has gone that would have been quite good fun landing on that you is there a cheeky cheeky landing spot on here somewhere not really maybe once I'm really good I might be able to get on the bow there but somehow I doubt it right let's rack it round A 
same issue before with the uh, funny tiles there. Um, this will be really good in VR. I think one of the things with flying helicopters is that you've got to have a much greater awareness of the way the world is moving around you. And um, I, do you know what? I think I prefer the the accurate model. The gamey one is just a little bit. I don't know. Feels a little bit too um, dampened down. I'm just going to check one thing. Um, yeah, I think in VR you've got a much better idea of what the aircraft is actually doing. Oh, there we go. You've got a much better idea of what the aircraft is actually doing uh, because you have more of a um, spatial awareness. I'm just checking that. On is advanced flight. Off is basic flight. So that is now off. So that means that we have, we're in the easy mode. So I'll put the um, hairy chested you know what mode back on bring our cyclic back up yeah see in VR now I'd have a better idea of what was going on around me so you have more of an idea of um, how the aircraft is actually yeah you see I did it again forgot the pedal let's put some left pedal in uh, yeah better awareness of how the aircraft is actually moving in terms of the space and I think that can only help in terms of being able to fly the aircraft more accurately um, but uh, yeah that's not too bad I, I am trust me I'm not saying I'm an expert by any stretch of the imagination but compared to um, the DCS attempt in the Huey which I uh, you know appreciate is an older aircraft with less uh, aids on it uh, I thought this was going to be a lot worse but beautiful to fly I think you know the the thing about simming is that sometimes you do want to mix it up a bit um, I fly warbirds most of the time so it's going to be nice once in a while to take the helicopter up and uh, do some bits and pieces and who knows what else is going to come in terms of missions and that kind of stuff. Um, there's some work being done uh, by Asobo on the helicopter capabilities of the simulator. So that will be interesting to see. And uh, this aircraft itself is, uh, you know, in the early stages, it's not the, the full release yet. So I can't wait to see what else they do for it. But um, yeah, I love it. I, I think it's the first helicopter that I've flown in a non-gamey sim. So I'm talking about the first helicopter that I've flown in something like P3D or FSX that has actually been really enjoyable to fly. Um, and a lot of that is probably helped by just how smooth this sim is. Um, I think we should land on that beach and go to the bar. Um, it's it, The sim is so smooth that it makes helicopter flying uh, a little bit more palatable because uh, again if you're if you're trying to fly a, a helicopter and you've got uh, stuttering and really bad frame rates and and all that sort of thing it's just a pain in the neck uh, but this sim is so smooth that uh, it makes the the tiny tiny inputs that you need to put into the aircraft uh, makes it uh, feel more responsive and also bearing in mind that in a sim we don't have that physical feedback we don't feel the forces as we fly around um, you get a much uh, a much smoother and more accurate idea of what's actually going on because you're not constantly fighting uh, slow frame rates or stutters or uh, anything like that okay if we get on the beach in one piece I'm buying I suppose what I really should say is if we crash, I'm buying. If we get on one piece, you can buy. Okay, sinking down. Now this is starting to get sticky now, straight away. 
we are okay let's now just hover taxi towards the beach Stop that drift. Okay. Whew. So there's a. It's funny how the beach seems a lot smaller. Actually, yeah, that looks. That the, the zoom sometimes makes things look a bit odd, but that's not too bad. We're on the beach. We're not in the water. Uh, I think there must be a bar nearby here somewhere. Fantastic. Well, there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's the second ever helicopter flight on the channel. Um, and it's certainly going to be the last. I'm hoping to do a lot more of these and also have some fun with this helicopter in the future doing some different bits and pieces. So thank you ever so much for watching. I hope to see you again on the channel soon. Take care and have a good one.